Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 best LGBTQ plus coming of age movies. You didn't tell me you were taking me to a gay bar. Well, where else would we go? For this list, we'll be looking at the most affecting and influential movies that feature gay, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, or otherwise queer protagonists coming into their own. Although they contain elements of a coming-of-age story, we won't be including films like Brokeback Mountain, as the lead characters are much older. I wish I knew how to quit you. Then why don't you? Why don't you just let me be, huh? Which of these movies had a profound impact on you? Let us know in the comments. Number 20, Cowboys. I'm not a tomboy. What? Tomboy's just another type of girl, but I'm not a girl. Written and directed by Anna Kerrigan, Cowboys offers a neo-Western take on the queer experience. The film centers around a trans boy named Joe, who, faced with the disapproval of his recently separated mother, struggles to assert his true identity. Come on. She's cool. Look at her. I don't want that. Okay, well then we're not getting any toys today. As a result, he runs off into the Montana wilderness with his father Troy, kicking off a police investigation into his disappearance, as well as his own transformative coming-of-age journey. Kerrigan goes for the gold here, serving up a nuanced, character-driven exploration into themes of family dynamics and the importance of unconditional love for queer youth. If you take her oh, with please. you, I'll call the police. I'm sorry. Dad. I can't stay here. Of course, Cowboys would be nothing without the impressive ensemble of actors who bring the well-rounded characters to life. Number 19, Rafiki. While there has been progress in LGBTQ acceptance in many countries, queer people still face danger in certain parts of the world. With her 2018 film Rafiki, Kenyan director Wanuri Kaiyu highlights this reality while telling a beautiful love story between two young women. Let's make a pact that we will never be like any of them down there. The movie follows Kenna and Ziki, who nurture a secret love for each other despite their fathers being political rivals. While Rafiki features the violence that queer people in such places face, it doesn't revel in it. Does that make it any better? Instead, it celebrates the unbridled joy that innocent love can bring, giving its lead characters an ending that is as happy as can be. Although it was temporarily banned in Kenya, it became the first film from the country to be screened at Cannes. Lay with me, we can put the stars to bed. Number 18, Holding the Man. John Callio, will you go round with me? Based on the critically acclaimed 1995 memoir by Timothy Conagrave, Holding the Man details the true love story between Conagrave and his partner, John Callio. The film follows the two young men from their first meeting as teenagers at a Melbourne secondary school. It then chronicles their journey as they both come to terms with their sexuality while navigating societal pressures and their own personal struggles. Hell, look at this part. Are you marrying me? Oh. It's an intense and enduring love story that is completely sold by the profound chemistry between the two lead actors, Ryan Kaur and Craig Stott. Although it ends on a sad note, with both characters succumbing to AIDS-related complications, Holding the Man is still an affecting tale of love and passion in the face of adversity. You can't go without me at your side. That's the deal. Number 17, Beautiful Thing. And are you? Queer. Gay. I'm very happy. I'm happy when I'm with you. Jamie and Stee are two teenage boys who discover their attraction to each other while living in a South London council estate. As they navigate their newfound feelings, the relationship between the boys blossoms, with help from their eccentric neighbor Leah and Jamie's single mother Sandra. What's his problem? Oh, he's in love, that's all. No. 
Yeah, I'll see ya. That is the premise of this screen adaptation of Jonathan Harvey's 1993 same titled original play. A tender yet complex coming of age story, Beautiful Thing was first released only on TV, but earned a theatrical run after garnering critical acclaim. The film brilliantly explores the intricacies of young love, highlighting just how important it is for young queer people to be accepted and supported by their own community. <laughs> Number 16, Blue is the Warmest Color. Clocking in at three hours, Blue is the Warmest Color is certainly a slow burn, but one that cares about and revels in its central characters. The movie centers on the young love between the young Adele and the artistic blue-haired Emma. Director Abdelatif Keshish places the audience right in the center of the whirlwind romance, with stunning visuals to highlight the emotional depths that the film dives into. Tu bois une goudale. La bière des goudous. It manages to be a gorgeously sincere look at two young girls in love, while never feeling overly sentimental. The fervency between the two leads is palpable, as the radiant performances and superb cinematography work together to craft an utterly unique vision. Number 15, Itu Mama Tambien. No? Co-written and directed by acclaimed Mexican filmmaker Alfonso Cuaron, Itu Mama Tambien is not your typical queer movie. It follows the journey of two close friends, Julio and Tenoch, who embark on a road trip with an older woman named Luisa. As the three travel through rural Mexico, they engage in a series of romantic and emotional encounters that challenge their preconceptions of love, friendship, and sexuality. With exceptional performances from Diego Luna and Gael Garcia Bernal, the film questions traditional notions of masculinity by taking both characters on an unexpected sexual awakening. The film takes the road movie genre and injects it with themes of class and politics, elements that can appeal to everyone, and their mother too. Tenoch se disculpó. Su novia lo esperaba para ir al cine. Julio insistió en pagar la cuenta. Nunca volverán a verse. Number 14, The Way He Looks. <laughs> After receiving high acclaim for his 2010 short, I Don't Want to Go Back Alone, Brazilian filmmaker Daniel Ribeiro decided to expand it into a feature. In 2014, Ribeiro released The Way He Looks, a brilliant evolution of its source material. The film centers around Leonardo, a blind teenager who longs for his independence from his parents. At the same time, he develops feelings for a new student in his high school named Gabriel, which threatens his relationship with his best friend, Giovanna. Although The Way He Looks features multiple teen movie tropes, what sets it apart is its genuine warmth and absolutely lovable protagonists. This is one film that will remain with you long after it comes to an end. Olha só, o tá firme mesmo, hein, Leonardo? Number 13, Crazy. Set in the 1960s and 70s, Crazy follows Zachary Bolia as he struggles to come to terms with his sexuality. Growing up as one of five boys in a deeply conservative family, Zach initially represses his true feelings for fears of being rejected by his folks. As he goes through various life experiences, Zach gradually learns to accept himself and eventually comes out to his family. Co-written and directed by Jean-Marc Vallée, Crazy is brought to life by an impressive soundtrack, featuring hits by David Bowie, Pink Floyd, and the Rolling Stones.
The film received critical acclaim and is considered by some to be one of the best Canadian films ever made. Number 12, Get Real. That. This one may not be as popular as some of the other entries on this list, but it nevertheless deserves a spot here. Get Real explores the coming of age of Stephen Carter, a closeted British schoolboy who falls in love with a popular jock named John after finding out he's also queer. I mean, how can you really like yourself if you deny what you are? Why? Let's tell everyone then. No, don't you dare! When John gets paranoid that he has been outed to the entire school, he destroys his relationship with Stephen and abandons him. Released back in 1998, the film was groundbreaking in its exploration of self-discovery, acceptance, and the challenges of coming out, especially at a young age. I've never loved anyone so much. Through its nuanced and realistic portrayal of the experiences of LGBTQ youth, Get Real has now become a beloved classic of queer cinema. Number 11, I Killed My Mother. Stimmt. Co-produced, written, and directed by Canadian prodigy Xavier Dolan, who also stars in the lead role, I Killed My Mother was partly inspired by Dolan's real life. The film revolves around Hubert Minel, a talented teenager whose tumultuous relationship with his single mother affects the exploration of his own sexuality. Même quand j'essaie d'imaginer quoi la pire mère du monde ressemblerait là, j'arrive pas à surpasser ce que t'es. As he grapples with his identity and tries to find his place in the world, Hubert experiences conflicting emotions about his mother, whom he both loves and resents. Borrowing from his own life, Dolan tells a poignant story of the challenges of growing up queer in a society that often misunderstands you. <laughs> Although uneven at times, I Killed My Mother is still raw, honest, and criminally good. Number 10, Wendell and Wild. I'm Raul. I don't do friends, Raul. Bad things happen to people I'm close to. This 2022 horror comedy marked the long anticipated return of the famed stop motion animation filmmaker Henry Selick, co written by Jordan Peele who also voices one of the titular characters. Wendell and Wilde tells the story of Cat, an angsty teenager who is tricked into summoning two demons into the land of the living. While the film does a great job with its fantastical exploration of grief, it also triumphs in its frank and honest representation of trans people. Wow, you were a poodle too. I, I tried to be, but you're not nearly as annoying. This is achieved through Kat's best friend Raoul, a trans boy in an all-girls school who uses his art to express himself and challenge authority. Despite being a supporting character, Raoul's identity journey still takes the foreground in a way that feels organic and effortless. It's Kat. Number 9, Book Smart. Every time I come to visit you, you're just going to be scissoring a different girl. Dude Scissoring is not a thing. Don't knock it until it's you've tried it. Thing. Don't knock it until you've tried I'm it. I'm not knocking it. But How about you don't knock it until you've tried it? In this raunchy comedy, Amy and Molly hope to make up for their time spent focused on school with one wild night of partying before graduation. Unlike many of the other movies on this list, Booksmart treats Amy's sexuality as simply matter of fact as she spends the film pursuing a girl she has a crush on. What are you doing? Go back! Oh, that was bad. That was that was bad. I'm good. I don't even know if she's into girls. I'm good. That was... She wore a polo shirt to prom. Well, that's just her gender performance. It's different from her sexual orientation. I'm sorry, but I don't get it. Filled to the brim with zany characters and delivering one quotable line after another, it's one of the most distinct high school comedies to be released in the 2010s. Oh god, you taste like my vitamins. Uh, I think I'm in love with you. I don't think you are. You're coming with me. What? Dance party upstairs! Yeah! The friendship between the two leads is at the heart of the movie, though, and their chemistry is what makes this a modern teen classic. Mm, I have no what? breath. Excuse me? Sorry, what? I have nowhere friend? to go with this. It's too perfect. You are literally glowing. You've hit the level of perfection, and now I'm just. I have you stole my heart. Number eight, my own private Idaho. I always know where I am by the way the road looks. Look, I just know that I've been here before. 
Gus Van Sant's cult classic drama is widely regarded as a landmark in queer cinema of the late 20th century. With electric performances from River Phoenix and Keanu Reeves, it follows Mike and Scott as they embark on a search for Mike's mother, learning about one another along the way. It's a touching and at times brutally honest tale of transitioning from one phase of life to another, and it doesn't pull any of its narrative punches. I will die a hundred thousand deaths before that happens. Though its Shakespeare-inspired story is relatively tame by today's standards, its subject matter and style were innovative at the time and opened the door for several later films on this list. Well, you know, normal, like, like a mom and a dad and a dog and shit like that. Normal. Normal. So you didn't have a normal dog? Number 7. But I'm a Cheerleader One, two, three, four, you're the one that I adore. Five, six, seven, eight. Don't run from me, cause this is fate. Although it received negative reviews upon its release, But I'm a Cheerleader has since grown to become a cult classic, and deservedly so. Starring Natasha Lyonne, this movie follows her character, Megan Bloomfield, who was sent to a conversion therapy camp by her conservative parents. Despite not initially considering herself to be gay, Megan slowly begins to understand and accept her sexuality, with the help of her fellow attendees. I'm a homosexual! But I'm a Cheerleader puts the camp in campy, employing a hyper aestheticized look in its satire of religion, heteronormative standards, and societal expectations. In doing so, it raises awareness about the harmful effects of conversion therapy and the importance of accepting people for who they are. My name is Peter, and my daughter is a homosexual. Hello, Hello Peter. Number six. Mysterious Skin. In fact, his vibe is kind of weirdly asexual. His name is Brian Lackey. He lives in Little River and, like yours truly, attends Hutchinson Loser Community College. Mysterious Skin tells the parallel story of UFO enthusiast Brian and teenage gay cowboy Neil, who share a painful event from the past. The two deal with their trauma in vastly different ways, as Brian attempts to find the truth in alien abduction theories, and Neil tries to find fulfillment in New York. You yeah, don't think Jackson's hot? Dude, he's fat and bald. Although it's a particularly harrowing film, it treats its themes and content with the greatest care, crafting a beautiful and ultimately uplifting story. You're on your way to uncovering the truth. Think of yourself as a detective following clues. Maybe concentrate on that other boy in your dreams. He could help you find the answers you're looking for. Featuring a marvelous early career performance from Joseph Gordon-Levitt, it's a hidden gem that's hard to watch, but truly thought-provoking. Number five, God's Own Country. Do we understand each other? Good. This British indie flew under the radar when it premiered in 2017, which is a shame since it was one of the year's best films. It tells the story of Johnny, a depressed farmhand struggling with alcohol use disorder, who begins to rethink his life when he meets and begins to fall for Jorge. They call thee Georgie or something. Jorge. A poignant romance wrapped up in a gritty setting, this juxtaposition sets the stage for the raw passion of the lead's relationship as it develops over the course of the film. It's beautiful here, but lonely, you know? Despite the muddy backdrop, it's ultimately a story of learning how to love oneself as well as another and the beauty is hidden beneath the muck. <laughs> Number four, Pariah. What if, say, somebody liked you? They like you or they like you like you? They like you like you. Uh-huh. A deeply personal film, Pariah is writer-director D. Rees' semi-autobiographical story of self-discovery. Alike is a young poet who has recently come to terms with her attraction to women and her preference to present herself androgynously. Everything's fine. Did you ask her? No, because I don't have to. While she has supportive friends, her parents struggle with her changing identity. It presents familiar themes in a fresh way as Alike juggles her true self with her relationship with her family. I'll be praying for you. 
That said, every character is written and played with a degree of empathy, never outright villainizing the parents for their views and helping us to understand how difficult Alike's struggle is. Okay, look, I am concerned that my mom will find out, but it's, but it's not like that. It's just that she's, look, if you knew my mother, you'd understand. Oh, she's protective. Equal parts heartbreaking and inspiring, Pariah manages to tap into the most human elements of the experience of coming out. Broken is freedom. I am not broken. I'm free. Number three, call me by your name. Why don't you and I go swimming? Right now? Yeah. Based on Andre Asimov's novel of the same name, Call Me By Your Name follows 17-year-old Elio over a single summer in Italy. He falls for the artistic grad student Oliver, and the two begin to bond, and eventually have a passionate summer fling. I love this, Oliver. <sighs> what? Everything. Despite telling an admittedly simple story, the emotions are raw and true, and Timothy Chalamet's phenomenal performance is a masterpiece unto itself. Director Luca Guadagnino captures the frenzied intimacy of a first love with gusto, with every shot more evocative than the last. The movie lives and breathes as it follows Elio on his journey, and it will stay with you long after your first viewing. Oliver. I remember everything. Number two, Love Simon. I'm just like you. I have a totally, perfectly normal life. Except I have one huge ass secret. When Love, Simon debuted in 2018, it was the first film from a major Hollywood studio to focus on gay teen romance, and it made quite a splash. And then there was my first girlfriend. I think I'm falling in love with you. Wow, thank you. Be right back. Simon is a secretly gay high school student who finds solace in a pen pal named Blue. The two come out to each other, and Simon begins to have feelings for him, even though he has no idea who he's talking to. I think I'm the kind of person who is destined to care so much about one person it nearly kills me. Me too. It manages to tap into the anxieties of coming out with more than enough charm, humor, and sincerity to go around. But these, these last few years, more and more, it's almost like I could feel you holding your breath. Love, Simon is one of the most important LGBTQ plus movies of the 2010s. But you get to exhale now, Simon. You get to be more you than you have been in, in a very long time. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Moonlight. Hey, Black. I mean, uh, Chiron. What's up, man? It's, uh, it's Kevin. As the first Best Picture winner to feature LGBTQ plus themes, Barry Jenkins' dazzling portrait of a young man growing up black and gay is nothing short of phenomenal. It depicts the life of Chiron as he comes to terms with who he is in three parts, as a youth, as a teen, and as an adult. Nah, you trying to get smart with me, huh, Chiron? Yeah, you trying to get smart with me, huh? Loaded with themes of race, sexuality, and identity, Moonlight reaches a depth that many films attempt, but few are able to achieve. You gonna tell him why the other boys kick his ass all the time? With a compelling hero and a singularly brilliant vision, it's a movie that transcends the life it portrays, and surely one that we will be talking about for a long time to come. <laughs> what you, what you looking at me like that for? What, man? Come on, you just drove down here? Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.